today we are going to see about managed identity versus service principle. This is a very important interview question. So if you are someone who is going to attend an Azure Data Engineering interview, there is a high chance that you'll be asked this question. So this can be asked in different ways. You might get a question like, what is managed identity or what is service principle? Otherwise, when to go for managed identity or when to go for service principle? And even something like, what are the advantages and disadvantages of managed identity and service principle? So all these are the different types of questions that you might be asked and I would say almost a 95% chance to get this question in your interview. So you should definitely know these concepts clearly. And in this video, we'll be discussing about these in detail, both concept wise and also finally with a demo. So before seeing about the definition of these, let's take an example to understand the concept better with an analogy. Consider there is a company and in that company, consider there is a data engineering team, which you see on the right side. And also they have hired a new employee, which you can see in the left side. Now, consider this data engineering team is going to work on a new data engineering project, which needs to be built using Azure Cloud Platform. Now, say for example, this new employee have a very good knowledge of Azure technologies. So in that case, this new employee can join the data engineering team to work collaboratively on the data engineering project. So this is the first scenario. Now in the second scenario, consider the data engineering team is going to work on a new project that needs to be built using AWS Cloud Platform. Now in this case, the new employee does not have any knowledge about AWS. He couldn't be able to assist the team with his work. So in that case, what will happen is, the company A hires a new employee from an another company, say company B as a contractor. So basically this contractor employee from company B have a very good knowledge of AWS and he can join the data engineering team of company A to work on the AWS data engineering project. So now these two scenarios can be matched with two things. The first scenario here is like the managed identity. And the second scenario is the service principle. The reason for this is here the managed identity is completely managed by Azure itself. And whereas the service principle is kind of a third party thing that is not managed by Azure, but it is used whenever required. Now I will explain how does both of these work in the context of Azure. So firstly, both the managed identity and the service principle is used for authentication purpose. So what I mean by this is, as you can see here, the one on the right side is Azure Databricks. And if you want to give access of Azure Databricks to Azure Data Factory, which is in the left, you can give it using managed identity. So basically, when you create a Azure Data Factory, an ID will be created automatically by Azure, which is called as managed identity. And we can use this ID to directly allocate access of other resources. Now, in the second scenario, we have Azure DevOps in the left and consider if you need to give access of Azure Databricks to Azure DevOps. Here, you cannot directly do this using managed identity. So in that case, you need to use a kind of a third party ID to allocate this access. So this third party ID is called a service principle. So what this basically means is the Azure DevOps doesn't have a managed identity similar to Azure Data Factory. So that's the reason we are using service principle in the middle to get access to the Azure Databricks. Cool. So now let's see how both the service principle and the managed identity looks like in Azure. Okay, I'm in the Azure portal now. And as you can see here, I'm inside a resource group. In this resource group, we have these two resources. The first one here is the data factory and the second one is the Azure Databricks. So as discussed in the example, let's see how these things work in real time. Here, as per our example, consider this data factory needs to access this Azure Databricks. So for that, we need to configure the access permission in Azure Databricks. So let's open it. Here, you'll see something called access control, which is mainly used to configure all the access related stuff for the resource. 
So let's open it. To give the access, we need to click on this add button and choose add role assignment option. Now, here I'm going to give you a contributor access so that most of the Databricks elements can be accessed by the data factory. So let's click on this contributor access and go to next. Okay, so this is the important part where we'll be configuring who needs to be given access to. Here, there are two options. In the first one, we have something called user. So this user is just a specific user. Say for example, this Mr. K talks tech at gmail.com is an user. You can give access to this user with this option. Or you can give access to a group. For example, if there are 10 users working as a team, so for these 10 users, you can create a security group and you can add these 10 users to that group. Now, if you give access to the security group, all the users in the group will get the contributor access to the Databricks. So this is the main use of the user and the group. But what we are going to discuss in detail is the service principle and the managed identity. Firstly, I'm going to talk about the managed identity. So let's choose this and click on the select member option. So basically, according to that example, we discussed if you want to give access to your data factory, we can do it using managed identity. So that's what we are going to see now. So here, firstly, there is an option to choose the subscription and then we have managed identity. Now, as you can clearly see, we have an option to choose data factory. So as discussed earlier, when you create a data factory in Azure, a managed identity will be automatically created by Azure itself. So for example, if I click on this data factory option, you can see all the data factory that is available in this subscription. So you can choose the data factory that needs this access and click on the select option over here. So if you assign this access, what will happen is, this data factory called ADF Demo Mr. K will be able to access this Azure Databricks. So this way of authentication is called as managed identity based authentication. Now let's talk about the service principle. Here, I have opened the Azure DevOps in a new tab. Say for example, using this Azure DevOps, let's say you're trying to implement a CACD pipeline for Azure Databricks. So for that, this Azure DevOps pipeline needs to get access to the Azure Databricks to make the deployment. So for giving this access, you cannot use the managed identity option. The reason for this is, there is no such thing called managed identity for Azure DevOps. So in this case, you cannot use managed identity. So that's the reason we would need something called service principle for configuring this access. So let's see how we can use service principle to do it. So to create a service principle, we need to use a tool called Azure Entra ID. So this is previously called as Azure Active Directory. This is the tool which is mainly used to perform all the identity-based management in Azure. Okay, so here we have something called app registration. So let's open it. So basically, this is called service principle. And as you can see here, I have already created a service principle called Databricks Access. So to create a new service principle, you can click on this new registration button over here. Now I'll open this Databricks Access Service Principle. As you can see here, this service principle have multiple IDs like the client ID, object ID, and tenant ID. When you create a service principle, you get these IDs assigned to it. In addition to that, if you click on this certificates and secret option, here we need to create a key for the service principle. So what this means is, when you give the service principle the contributor access to the Azure Databricks, any external tools like Azure DevOps can use the IDs and the key of the service principle to authenticate and get access to Azure Databricks. So for doing this, firstly we'll copy the service principle name which is Databricks Access and we'll jump back to the Azure Databricks. Here I will choose the service principle option and we'll click on the select members. And in the text box, I will paste the service principle name. As you can see here, we have the Databricks Access Service Principle. 
and if you give the contributor access of Azure Databricks to this service principle by assigning this permission, what will happen is the service principle will get the contributor access and now Azure DevOps can use the IDs and keys of this service principle to authenticate with Azure Databricks and will get the same contributor level access to make any sort of CACD pipeline deployments. So that's how the service principle works in real time. So I think now you should have a clear understanding of service principle and managed identity. So now to summarize this as a definition, managed identity is an automatically created identity which is used to access Azure resources. Whereas a service principle is an application created using Azure Intra ID and it can be used by any internal or external services like applications or the automation tools like Azure DevOps for accessing the Azure resources. Now let's talk about the most important part, which is the advantages and disadvantages of both. Firstly, one of the main advantage of using managed identity is, it is so secure and easy to manage. So as seen in the demo, we don't have to manually create these IDs. So by default, all these ID will be automatically created and managed by Azure itself. So you don't have to worry about anything. And for this reason, it is so secure and it is very easy to manage. Whereas in service principle, it is not really secure and it is very difficult to manage as well, which is the main disadvantage of using this. The reason for this is in service principle, we have to manage these credentials by ourselves. So as seen before, if you are creating a service principle, we need to create a key for authentication. So in this case, if the key expires, we cannot use the service principle for accessing any services. Also, if any existing application is already using the expired service principle, it will break. So you may need to renew the keys regularly, which causes an additional management overhead. Also, most importantly, if someone takes the IDs and the key, there may be an instance where it can be misused. So for this reason, it is not that secure and it is difficult to manage as well. Similarly, the biggest weakness of managed identity is it is not flexible. The reason for this is we do not have much control over it since it is completely managed by Azure. So we have only few options which we can use to configure the access. On the other hand, the service principle is so flexible. So we can create as many service principles as we like and these service principles can be used in multiple internal and external services to configure the access which provides a lot of flexibility. So that's the main advantage of using service principle. Okay, finally let's talk about when to go for what. So if you are asked this question in your interview, the best answer would be Microsoft recommends using managed identity wherever possible. For example, if you need to configure the access to an Azure resource, and if the managed identity is supported in that access configuration, then it is better to go to the managed identity 100% because it is so secure and it is easy to manage. In the same way, if the managed identity is not supported in any situation, then only during this time, it is recommended to go for the service principle way of authentication. So this is a very important interview question and I hope everyone should have got an overall understanding of this. So in the next video, let's discuss about a different interview question. So thanks for watching until the end. Cheers. Bye.